Same happy Monday. Coming to a comfortable seated position on your mat. 60 minute practice. If your knees, if your hips are tight, your knees will be pointing very high up. It's not comfortable. And then you can take a block or two blocks to sit on the blocks so that it's much more comfortable for your hips and your knees do not turn up so high. They will be still high, but at least they are relatively lower compared to your buttocks when you are sitting on a block. Alright, rest your palms onto your knees. This is the first, this is the first pose, seated position. Not really strength based, but it is in a way you are engaging your core. Suck your belly in like you want to shrink your waistline. And your back, if I turn sideways, your back is not rounded. It is lifted. So there is some strength in your back muscles to hold your, belt, your back still. Alright? Close your eyes. Rest your palms onto your knees. Face is facing forward. Develop the physical capacity to remain calm. At a mental level, using the physical ability of your back to be straight, shoulders yet relaxed. So that on the physical level, your body is holding your body still. You're holding your body still, I mean. You're focusing on your breathing and that helps to get your mind in check so your mind doesn't daydream. Join your palms to heart center as we begin this practice, everyone. We bow our heads down to palms to heart center. Whether you are a member of Pure Yoga in Singapore or elsewhere, in Hong Kong or another Pure Yoga member somewhere else, or you're just joining us in this Instagram video on this yoga class, I really welcome you to join us on this journey for this class to find strength in your body while keeping your mind strong and stable and calm. Enjoy your practice everyone. Do the best you can. Lift your head back up. Open your eyes. Good evening everyone. Namaste. Evening in Asia. If you are dialing in from elsewhere, maybe good evening for those in Australia and New Zealand and also good morning or good afternoon for the other parts of the world. Okay, come into a tabletop position. Let's get the body warmed up first before we start to work on the body. Tabletop, your arms are straight on the, on the mat about shoulder width distance. Your knees below the hips at hip distance, so like your hands, your, your arms and your two legs, your two thighs make two four legs on the table. Inhale to your cow, hollow your back, like you want to collect rainwater with your back. It goes up. Exhale cat, round the back, chin to chest. Inhale cow, hollow your back, it goes up. Exhale cat. Inhale cow. 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 And exhale cat. And inhale back to your position. Move your knees about 10 inches backwards and then stretch your arms forward. Try to keep your arms parallel to each other at shoulder width distance, not too wide. So your arms are not like this, somewhere here. Coming into a nice good stretch for your shoulders, your chest, and a bit of a back bend, puppy pose. Sink your chest down, keep your buttocks above your knees or slightly forward a little bit if it's too intense. And then sink it down like this. Okay, stick your chin forward and calmly breathe. And try to rest your chin on the mat so you can move your knees backwards to get your chin down, you get a stretch. Feel the space between your shoulders and your ears, guys. The more you relax your body, the more your body can come down to your mat. Take a few more breaths in this puppy pose.
for three, for two, and for one. Lift yourself back up to your tabletop, and then lift your knees up, downward facing dog. So you lift your knees up, legs straight, or try to keep your leg as straight as you can. Walk your dog, bend one leg, straighten the other. Downward dog, a very common, very common pose. Like an upside down letter D or like a mountain top. You can choose to keep still or you can walk your dog. Continue for five more breaths. And then you walk your palms about three to five inches forward for a more extended downward dog. Try to push the front of the mat. Like you want to push, like what you really want to push this mat forward. And then you try to press your feet and your toes down to push the mat backwards. So you want to lengthen your mat. And then stretch the mat as you're trying to get your head to touch the mat. Now you can keep still or you can bounce up and down like this. Bounce up and down with your head up and down gently. Go ahead, get an opening to your shoulders. And then you keep still, try to get the crown of your head or a bit of your forehead coming down to your mat. Look between your toes, please. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift your head back up. Walk the feet to the center of the mat, your feet about hip distance, and then you bow forward. You can bounce up and down if you want to, or you can keep still. You can place your hands or try to get your hands and fingers and thumbs and your palms touching the mat. You can go a bit more, you can wrap your arms behind your legs to get your chest and your belly to touch your legs and look back down. Stay for five. Stay for four. Stay for three. Two. And one. Step back into your downward facing dog. Feet to the back of the mat, hands in front of the mat. At the front of the mat. Now step your right foot forward, take your left knee down. Lift your chest up. Let's get a bit of a stretch to your shoulders while we stretch the hips and later you start to work on your hips and your shoulders in the poses for the strength in this strength class. Interlace fingers behind your back, elbows straight and to the best you can. Now if the left knee on the mat is not happy, please place a towel. And then you want to go deeper, you can stretch more to this hip flexor, you walk the foot, the right foot forward. Interlace fingers behind your back. Lift the interlace fingers up. Look forward or slightly look up to the ceiling. So this pose is double acting, acting on your hip flexor on your left, acting on your shoulder opening with the interlace fingers behind your back. Stay. Breathe calmly. See whether you can sink the hips lower and take your interlace fingers higher. For five. Four. Three. Two. One. Release the hands down in front of you. Shift the right foot to the right side. And turn the right foot 45 degrees to the right. So from here, you shift it a bit more to the right and then turn it 45 degrees to the right. Press your palms onto your mat, so your palms, your hands and your right foot are aligned in one straight line. As you can see, it's a one straight line. And then the, the back toes like this, you can point them or you can flex the ankle, okay? Lizard pose, open up the hip, sink the hips down. You can keep your palms here or you have more space with your hip opening, you can lower the elbows down. If elbows on the mat is ah too intense, 
and palms on the mat is too easy. Come in the middle like this, so you use your blocks. That's where blocks will be used so. Rest your forearms onto your block, so you're halfway there, not too high and not too low. Open up this right side of your hips. Stay. Your hands, you they feel idle, you can just let the fingers touch on the mat, or you can interlace fingers. No worries. Stay. In many poses, I wouldn't say all, but in many poses, you'll be contracting the muscles that you're working on in the strength-based pose, but at the same time, some muscles or a muscle in the opposite side of that muscle that you're contracting is stretching. So there will be some flexibility involved, so I think we'll call it mobility. Strength to hold the space that you have created. So let's create the space in the hips, in this lizard pose. And release. Step back, downward facing dog, guys. Now the other side, step your left foot forward. Take your right knee down. The toes behind, you can keep them curled under or you can point the toes. Interlace fingers for your second shoulder opening stretch. You can move the right foot, the left, the left foot forward more a few inches, able to bend the knee more to sink the hips down and lift the interlace fingers up. Stay. Come deep breathing. For four, for three, for two, and one. Release. Come into the lizard pose. So this time it is your left foot. Move it a bit more towards the left, and then turn the left foot forty-five degrees. You see me? Be here. Okay. Towards the left. Rest your palms down on the mat, align with your left foot so they, remote, they make a straight line. And then you can sink the hips down. Feel the space you are creating on this left side of the hip. Again, you have an option. This is really challenging for you. You stay with your palms on the mat or you can... Say hello everyone, Kitty. Oh, there she is. Look at her tail. <laughs> like a fluffy Christmas tail. Or you can bend the elbows, elbows on the mat or elbows on your block, coming halfway. So go ahead. If your elbows are down on the mat or on the block, your elbows should be aligned with your left foot. That means your elbows should be where your palms used to be. Few more breaths. And you may release. Step back, downward facing dog. Feet together, big toes touching. Coming to the plank position. Simple pose, gonna start to build the strength to your shoulders. Shoulders above your wrists. Walk your feet backwards more so that your buttocks are not as high as your uh, higher than your shoulders. Lower them so that they are about as high or slightly lower. Now don't sink your chest down like this. Round the back like a cat pose, like want to push your chest up. Keep looking down in front of you, in front of your hands. Breathe, shoulder strength. Five, four, three, two. One, downward dog, press it back. Now the next pose is also the high plank, but you're going to move your shoulders in a way that is able to move your shoulder blades up and down. So you can sit down and look at me first while I demonstrate. Because if you to do the pose now, you cannot see because you're looking down or you're looking on the mat. So what you do, you see my shoulders here? I'm going to do this. So don't think about my legs here, think about my shoulders, so I'm doing this. Okay? 
I'm shrugging my shoulders and up. But when you do this, very easy for you to sink your belly down. So usually you, a common mistake is that when you sink this down, this will also go down. Engage your core, so no curving, straight back. You see, it's a straight back or slightly rounded. So it's this, 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 this. So this back doesn't sink down like this. No, do not sink. Okay? So your core is also engaged, so you're using your core. So in the full position, this is a high plank. Engage your core, suck your belly in, and then you just sink the whole body like a straight line down, and then up. And then shoulder blades together, and then push the shoulder blades away from each other, down and up. Continue to round the leg. Okay, let's go. Come into the high plank position. Come on guys, go, don't just watch. Okay, holding this high plank, suck your belly in, keep your hips as high as your shoulders or slightly lower. Round the back like a little cat pose. Now engage your core, keep your core engaged so that your shoulders, your back is rounded a little bit. Now sink the chest down, chest down. But the body still remains straight line. Exhale, push it up. Inhale, sink the chest down, shoulder blades to touch. Exhale, shoulder blades push up to separate them together. Inhale. Exhale, push up. Inhale to sink. Exhale to push. Eight more times. Inhale to sink. Exhale to push. Inhale to sink. Exhale to push. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Four more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale to sink the chest down. Exhale, push it up, round the back, hold that, breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Downward dog, down, release. Inhale to your plank again. Now we're going to get more to your triceps and also your shoulder strength. Lower the knees down. Keep the back slightly rounded, bend the elbows into your lower plank. When you bend the elbows, don't bend the elbows on the outside. So don't do this. Bend the elbows backwards so that you're coming down with your elbows close to your body. Take a deep inhale, knees on the mat. Exhale, lower plank. Suck your belly in, don't sink your belly down. Go down and press up when you breathe in. When you press up, you're not pressing like this, not like upward dog and press up, so you engage your core all the time. So your core holds your hips there, your hips and your shoulders move up at the same time. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, go into Chaturanga with your knees on the mat. Inhale, lift up, shoulder strength and your back strength. Exhale, go down. Inhale, go up. When you go down, don't go past your elbow height. So keep at the height of your elbows. Not sure, look at one elbow. Exhale, look down. You can see I'm looking down, so that my elbow is the same height as this one. And inhale, push up. Three more times. Exhale, go down. Inhale, up. Look forward, or you can look slightly down. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. One more. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. And downward facing dog. Take a few more breath, getting the stretch to the back of your legs and also to your lower back for some of you. Okay, rest your knees on the mat, sit up and look at me while I demonstrate the next pose. Many poses when I demonstrate, you have to look at me first because when you walk on a pose, it's very hard for you to see because you'll be looking down or looking somewhere. So it's pretty awkward for you to see what I'm doing when I'm, them, when I'm telling you the pose. So it's best for you to see what the pose looks like before you work on the pose. Now this pose will be quite challenging for some of you, but you do your best. You try to keep one or both knees off the mat. So let me show you sideways first. This way, I'm back to my plank. I'm gonna take my right foot, I'm going to cross it over to the other side. You can take it slightly back, which is easier for your legs. You can take it more towards the front, so you get a stretch also to the hamstring. Now the other foot, you can see my other foot, I'm still in tiptoes. 
still in tiptoes. I lean forward, lean forward until I keep pushing my chest until I feel the strength is until the feel. Sorry, let me say that again. Until I feel my body weight mostly on my fingers and my palms, so I can lift the back leg off the mat. Not this leg. This leg on the floor is the other leg lifted off. So you lean forward and then you can lift it up. Ooh. Strong pose, lift it up, okay? So if I face you this way, it is like this. Right leg to my left. Lean forward, lean forward until I can lift up the leg behind me. You can see it can go higher or you can stay parallel to your mat, which is even more intense. So in the end, from four points of your body, your two pants and your two feet, it becomes only two palms and the one that is crossed over to that side of the mat, that foot, with the remaining foot lifted up. Okay? Okay, now you try. Coming to the high plank position. Take the right leg, point it over towards the other side, towards the left. Cross it over. So right leg cross to your left. The other foot on tiptoes. Lean forward, lean forward, press the knuckles down until you feel a lot of the weight on your palms and your knuckles. And suck your belly in to lift up your left foot up, the one behind you, the one on the mat. Lift it up. Stay and breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe for five, four, three, two, one. Release. Step back, take a double dog, catch your breath. Work on the other side, lean forward to your high plank. Left knee, uh, left leg straightens towards the right side. Come to tiptoes with the other foot. I mean, you're still in tiptoes. Shift the weight forward until you can feel the weight onto your palms. And lift up the leg behind you, the right leg lifted up. Stay and breathe for four, three, two, and one. Release. Take a child's pose. A lot of shoulder work on this position. And later we add the shoulders and the core and the hips, the strength and mobility in the subsequent poses and movements. For now, take three more breaths, three more breaths in your child's pose. Okay, and release. So the previous poses in the high plank, the low plank chaturanga, your knees on the mat, and this pose where the one leg is, criss is crossed over to the other side, and you try to float the leg behind you to lift it up. These are good poses you can work on, even if you cannot afford to come to a class, or you're very busy, do a bit here and there, it helps to build a strength in your shoulders. All right? Now the fourth movement would be sideways, so it engage the side core. We get the shoulder strength into a high plank position. So nothing fanciful about the side plank, not, not the high plank, I, I said wrongly, it's a side plank. So with the side plank, this is what it looks like. So I'll let you to, in this case, I'm not coming to this side plank on my, on this arm. So this arm, you move it forward a bit more so that when you turn to your side plank, you can see that my arm is 90 degrees to my torso. If you take your palm directly below your shoulders, what happens? It is at the angle. So if I'm upright, it becomes like this. Prefer you to have this angle at 90 degrees so it's a stable it's a more stable shoulder joint for your shoulders. Okay? So here are many options. Here I'm turning to this side. So it doesn't matter left or right, you can take it later. I can take the first option. The palm down, remember the palm should be away so that your fingers are pointing on the outside, pointing up. The palm is in front of the Armpit, so now, now your upper body, your torso is 90 degrees to your shoulder joint. The bottom knee on the same side, so this is my, this is my what? This is my left hand. <laughs> left hand, left hand, left knee. Left toes, you can tuck under or point them. And then you keep the other leg straight, then you have this side plank. First variation. Second variation, you can start to straighten this leg. And then the other leg, place it in front as you bend this knee. This would be a bit more difficult. Third version is to place the top leg in front of the 
other leg on the mat. Final version is to place the top leg really on top of the other leg. So you're only balancing on the left palm and your left foot. Okay? So let's work on the left since I'm really here. Go ahead. Like the first option like this. Second option, we've got top leg bent in the middle of the mat. Third option, top leg in front of the other foot, both feet on the mat. And then the fourth option, which is the most intense of all, the top leg on top of the bottom leg, on the left leg. Go ahead and breathe. Stay. You can look down, it is difficult for you to balance. You can start to turn to face the camera or face your monitor screen or your phone or you can look up to the ceiling. Stay for five. Stay for four. Stay for three. Two. And one. Release. Sit down on the mat, interlace fingers and just circle your wrist. Just to make sure everything is okay with your wrist. If it's okay for you, you don't have to do this exercise. But it's good to just get the wrist all stretchy. Switch direction. And then let's go to the other side, on your right side now. So, right palm down. You can take your bottom leg down like this. Turn the toes or point the toes towards the end of the mat. Your other leg straight. Lift up your... This is your left hand, or you can take the option 2, option 3, or option 4. Go ahead, stay and breathe. Keep pushing the mat so that you get yourself lifted, so your ears do not sink down to your shoulder. 4, 3, 2, 1, release. Now you take a downward facing dog. Okay, now we're going to combine all this together into one movement. You're going to go from a high plank to a fallen triangle. From a fallen triangle, you're going to use your hip strength in addition to your core and your shoulder strength to bring yourself to the front of the mat into a vertical splits. Okay, sounds complicated. Let me show you. So this is how it looks like facing you. So it's like a side plank, which is a fallen triangle, but with one leg in front on the side. So you're going to, for here, I'm going to take my right foot, I'm going to take it to this side, remember we did this. Now you press the other foot down the mat, so you're coming to the side plank, this position, coming to like a fallen triangle. So your bottom leg is the one cross over to this side. Now, you're going to bend the other leg, the leg behind you, bend it, and then float it up, whoop, this way. And then step it forward, and then kick up your right leg up into your vertical splits. If it's sideways, let me show you. This is how it looks like. Right foot towards the left. And then rest the other foot down the mat. Come into a side plank version with this right foot to your left. You're going to shift the weight forward. And then you're going to lift up the leg behind on the mat. Lift it up. Bend the knee towards the ceiling. One big lift. And then press it down in front of you. And then both palms down and then kick up your right leg up into your vertical splits, okay? Alright, I've said a lot. Now you go ahead and try. Come into the high plank. We work in a few breaths in each pose before we move to the next pose. Stay in high plank. Okay, bend the right knee towards the chest and then straighten this right leg to your left side. Right foot to your left side. Stay there. And then rest the foot down, the other foot down on the mat. Stay there, pause and breathe. Keep looking down. And then flip your chest up, release your right hand up. Stay there and breathe. Five, four, three, two, one. Now this right leg that is crossed over to your left side. Ignore that leg. The one that is behind you on the mat, shift the weight forward to your right palm left on the mat and then lift up this left leg up lift 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 now you stay now you breathe four three two 
One, take this left leg forward, step it forward between your two palms and then kick up into your vertical splits. Your right leg is up to the ceiling. Stay here and breathe. For five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Release. Step back, downward facing dog. So it's a combination, we've opened the hips quite a bit in the beginning. You're using the space you have in your hips, engaging your buttocks and your legs. Combination of effort from your buttocks, legs, hips, core, as well as your shoulder strength primarily. The core is working when you bring the knee up towards the chest, up towards the ceiling in that movement. Okay, back to your high plank. Stay in this high plank. Okay, bend the left knee to the chest. Left leg straightens across towards the right side. Stay there, take a few breaths here. And then lower the other foot, the right heel down on the mat. Take two breaths here. Come into the fallen triangle. It's like a side plank with one leg crossed over. That's all. Lift up the right hand up. Now this is a strength of your test of your strength of your left shoulder. Keep pushing your ears away from your shoulder. Shift the weight forward. Ignore the left leg, the one that is crossed over to the right. The, left, the right leg behind you, that is the one. Can you shift the weight forward to be able to bend that leg and take it up towards your armpit or towards the ceiling? Like this, stay. Breathe for five, four, three, two. Step it forward next to your left hand. Right hand down and kick the left leg up to the ceiling into your vertical splits five four three two one step back downward facing dog oh. take your downward dog Okay, and then rest your knees and shins on the mat. Sit up and look at me. Let's start to move a bit towards our core. But we're not going to ignore our hips and our shoulder strength. We still have a bit of that strength in these two body parts, shoulders and your hips, while we work on your core. So let me show you this pose. Look at me first. You're going to take your right leg up, swing it to the right side, you're going to take your left hand up, swing it towards the left, and you stay, okay? So there's some shoulder strength, but your core is to hold your body still and the hip strength to hold the leg up. And then, this right leg, swing it across to the left, and you take your left hand down, and you take your right hand up towards the other side. So it's like a twist, side bend, but the right leg is not touching the floor. You see my right leg is not touching. I swing my right hand towards the right and my right leg towards the left. Okay, this is a bit delicate balance. Stay and breathe. So the first round, it is a right leg to your right, left hand to your left. Second round, it is the right leg to your left and your right hand to the right. Okay? Okay, coming to a tabletop first. Let's go. Take your right leg, straighten it first, and swing it across to the right. Try to keep the right leg as high as your hip. Take your left hand up, straighten it across to the left. Pause and breathe. Four, three, two, one. Now place your left hand back down. Swing this right leg to the left side. You can look at your right foot if you want to, or you can look forward. You feel a crunching of your left side and then you find your balance you start to slowly delicately float up your right hand up and right hand straightens towards the right right hand to the right right leg to your left five four three two one release so there is a strength while there is a stretch or there are stretches happening in the other parts of the body. Come back to tabletop. 
left leg up, straighten your left leg, swing the left leg across to the left, take your right hand up, straighten it, swing the right hand across to the right, stay and breathe for four, three, two, and one, place your right palm back down, and then start to turn this left leg towards the right side, left leg to your right side. Twisting position, try to keep it up, don't let it drop the mat. And then find your balance on your right palm, float the left hand up and towards the left. Stay for five. Four. Three. Two. And release. Take a child's pose. Lift yourself back up. Now this is why the blocks will be very useful. We start to move towards the core, enough of the shoulders. Now some core work. Call up, sitting on the mat. Blocks will be useful, or you don't have to use the blocks. So, let's go together. I'll do sideways so you can see how it looks like. Sit on the block, I sit on the mat. Bend both knees very close towards you. Round the back. Getting your chin to touch your knees like this. And wrap your arms around your thighs, loving yourself. Ah. Stay there and breathe. Very easy, huh? this pose very easy. Just support this. So now you're creating some space. Even though you're rounding, you're stretching your back. You're contracting your abdominal muscles very firmly and yet still be able to feel a bit of your intensity in the core. Okay. Now keep hugging your legs. Hugging your shins towards you. Coming to tip, uh, coming to tip toes to lift the heels off. And then try to walk back and float the feet off, legs and ankles. So you my feet, you see my feet not touching the mat. Squeeze yourself again using your hands. So it's like the squeeze version of like a boat pose. Instead of the legs away from you, you bring the legs close towards you. Now release one hand. In this case, this is my right hand. Release it. And then release the other hand. And your knees still be close to your chest. Round the back, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Slowly straighten the legs away from you. You can take your back backwards along, both poles, lift the shins as high as your as high as your knees. Arms are forward. Back is straight. You want the challenge, you can take one or two blocks, or maybe a heavy book or a big encyclopedia or a dictionary and rest place it on the shins. Stay. Squeeze the knees together. Squeeze your inner thighs together. For four, three, two, one. You can remove the blocks, place your feet down, round the back, up the side between your knees. Stay there and breathe. We're going to do one more time, feet together, close towards heels, close to the buttocks, round the back, this time you're not going to hug it now, you just release your hands off. So no touching your legs, round the back, bring the knees close to the chest, and then lean back, tip toes, lift the heels off first, and then float the toes off now, flex the ankles, squeeze, breathe, for five, four, three, Two, one, go into your boat pose. In this second round, you can take your legs straight or you can bend your knees. Stay. Breathe for five, four, three, two, one. Bring your knees down, stretch and relax as you hug yourself between your knees.
Okay, let's stand up into your warrior two pose. So let's focus now to your hips. Uh, this way. Right foot forward, left foot back, warrior two. Release the arms horizontally. Look towards the straight arm in front of you. Now test the strength of your external hip rotator muscles. From here, you're going to hop forward to a tree pose. So if you continue to look at the screen when I demonstrate, I'm facing you. From here, my left leg is at the back. I'm going to hop and stand on my right leg. I try to keep my left leg up without touching, even if it's wobbly. So it's like this. One big step and three. If you cannot place the foot without using your hand, then you can just, from here, lift it up. A bit of wobbly, a bit wobbly, so fine. Just use your hand, place it there, and then you relax in this pose, okay? The key thing is to keep this foot not touching, so you engage this muscle, and this muscle will hold your body still. Try not to rock too much. The stronger your muscle here, the less you will wobble, okay? So coming to your, stay in your warrior two, get ready. So I face you, so you can see like this. One, two, three. Stand on your right foot, lift up your left leg, and three pose, with or without using your hands. And then go back to warrior two, bend your standing leg to get yourself lower. Quietly swing it back, one step if you can, and warrior two, without making any more adjustment. Good. Now the second version now, we're going to add one more pose to it. From here, you don't go to three. You're going to stand up, and then you're going to swing this leg up and straighten it. From here, sorry, you can see my sole of my foot. I need to moisturize the foot, not some dry skin there. And then you take into your three pose. And then you go back into warrior two. So you add one more pose to it before you go to your three, okay? Warrior two, the same side. Okay, get ready. Standing on your right foot, the one in front of you. Stand up, palms to heart center, swing the left leg straight forward. Don't lean back, keep your chest vertical. Four, three, two, one. Then you come to three. Three pose. Four, three, two, one. Then you bend your right knee to take your body lower so it's easier for you to balance as you take one big step with your left leg back to your warrior two and release shake it up let's go to the other side first round left foot forward right foot at the back warrior two so it is a movement between poses that is important or as equally important than the poses themselves warrior two okay the first round in the tree Get ready. One big step. Hop forward with your right foot. Don't touch the mat. And three pose. Yeah, you go. Stay. Now in this foot, you bend your left leg to bring yourself closer to your mat so you can able to go to warrior two with a big step back without any more adjustments. There you go. Okay, round two, remember the, the leg behind will have to swing in front before you go to the tree. Ready? And swing forward. Take it up. Ooh, you can see my foot now. Go ahead, breathe, four, five, four, Ooh. three, you know the dry skin, two, one, three, pose, take it, yeah. Sorry, the foot is in your face, huh? Come deep breathing. Come deep breathing, and then bend your standing leg, going to warrior two again, one big step, and release. Okay, shake it off. Now I shall show you the next pose. From warrior two, going to skadasana. Hips are open wide, hamstrings a bit stretched, and inner thighs stretch a bit, so we can go to the skadasana comfortably. If not, we can take your time slowly. 
The trick is to use only your leg strength and your hip strength without using your hands to touch down. So let me show you from your right foot forward in your warrior two. You're gonna palm so hard center. The leg that is straight shall always remain straight. Flip the back toes up. The front, the front foot, the right foot, turn it a few degrees towards the left so that you can able to slowly come down. Like this. First round, if it's like this, it's okay. If not, you can go lower all the way down without using your hands. Okay? If you need to use your hands, take your hands down as you come down. Going down is easier than coming up. Coming up, you're going to lift yourself up and then turn the foot back, the back foot to the front and the front foot back to your front into warrior two. We do this five times, okay? So everyone, right leg in front, warrior two. Try to make it one fluid movement. First, first rep, let's go slowly. Turn the back toes up, palms to heart center, turn the other front foot a few degrees towards your left, and then go down slowly, skadasana. Take three deep breaths in this first rep, repetition of this. You're gonna do five repetitions. And then, finish your third breath, and then inhale, push up without using your hands into warrior two. Now, four more repetitions a bit faster. Exhale, skadasana. Inhale up, warrior two. Exhale, skadasana. Inhale up, warrior two. Exhale, skadasana. Inhale up, warrior two. Last one. Exhale, skadasana. Inhale up, warrior two. And release. Shake it off. If you think that's tough, try to talk at the same time. Whew. Okay, I'm getting older. Okay, the other side. Left foot forward, warrior two. Bend the front knee. By the way, if you think you cannot do it because you're too old, I don't think so. Some of you know my age. For those who don't, I'm 51 years old. That's 5'1", okay? I look young. Thank you very much. Back to your pose. Warrior 2. So you can still do it. If I can do it, so can you. Don't give up. First round, palms to heart center. Take your time slowly. Leg straight at the back. Flip the toes up. Turn the other front foot a few degrees towards the right. Slowly come down. Slowly, slowly. Dun, 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 That's it. Stay. Breathe. Come deep breath. Get ready. One big inhale. Push up. Warrior two. Okay, four more times. Ready? Faster. Exhale. Skadasana. Inhale. Lift up. Warrior two. Exhale. Skadasana. Inhale up. Warrior two. Exhale, Skadasana. Inhale up, Warrior Two. Strong legs. Exhale, last one. Inhale, last one. And release. Ah, oh, shake it up, shake it up. Okay, we are done with the legs, with the hips, with the core, with the shoulders. Now, last piece is your back. Lie down on the mat with your chest down on the mat. Cobra pose position, hands underneath your shoulders, hug your elbows towards the body, lift yourself up, either elbow straight or bent, or you can take your palms forward. Look forward and stay and breathe. For five. For four. Two. One. Slowly lower down. Stretch your arms behind you. 45 degrees. Palms facing down. Now cup your fingers. So by cupping fingers, I mean your palms not on the mat like this, but you cup them so that you're holding a, an egg underneath your palms. 45 degrees. So you're using a bit of the weight on your fingers to lift you up in this modified cobra pose position. So cut your fingers, feet either together or hip distance apart. Now bend the elbows a few inches backwards and then 
See whether you can use your strength to lift yourself up and then straighten back the arms and stay. Like this. Breathe for five. Breathe for four. Breathe for three. Keep your back still keep your chest still up. Walk the fingers sideways and bend the elbows slightly to push up a bit more. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, slowly calm down, relax your hands, palms facing up. Okay, stretch your arms forward, your hands like a number 11. So great, uh, make, make some space for yourself, um, pretty close to the wall so I'm not going to do it now. So take your hands in front of you or I can do it in front. Point your toes behind, big toes touching, more intense, feet apart, less intense. Simple and easy shape you're making but very challenging for your back but it's very good. Do this maybe every day, a few seconds, maybe 10-20 seconds in each hole. Eventually, you feel your back getting stronger and you use that to get a good posture and don't feel tightness in your lower back, especially. And then one inhale, lift the chest up, lift the arms up, float the feet up, either feet at hip distance or feet together. Stay. I'm gonna count. One. Breathe. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. 7, 8, 9, 10, last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Release, calm down, catch your breath. Especially nowadays, we spend so much time at home, not just at home for the sake of being at home but also working from home or staying at home more often given the current situation we want to be safe and avoid crowds so we stay at home more often your back will eventually become weaker or your shoulders are slouched and your hips are tight from all that sitting so you use the practice despite it being a strength based pose to get some stretch in the hips in your core and also to get your back strengthened as well as the stretch to your shoulders in addition to all that strengthening. Breathe. Okay, we've come to almost to the end. As you're cooling down, lift yourself back up. Stretch your legs forward, sitting on the mat. Simple forward form. Reach the arms up and bend forward. Grabbing the feet or grab the shins. And take yourself down to your mat. Stay for three, for two, and one. Lift yourself back up. Let's take a spinal twist. Legs stretch in front of you. Bend the right knee. Cross the foot on the left side. Bend the other leg. Twisting to your right. Right hand behind. Left hand either hug it. The leg in front or hook it on the outside. On the right side. Elbows bend. Fingers up. Lengthen spine and twist. For five, for four, for three, for two, and one. Release, switch sides. Left leg straight, bend the left knee, cross the foot on the outside of the right knee, bend the other leg. Make sure both buttocks are on the mat, don't sit on the foot. Twisting to your left, left hand behind on the mat, right hand either hug the leg or hook it on the left side, elbow bend, fingers pointing up. Lengthen spine and twist. For four. For three. For two. And for one. Release. The last pose, highly encourage you to do this, but I don't know whether you're doing this or not. It's Javasana, three to five minutes as you lie on your mat. And your palms facing up away from you and your legs as well as your hips 
and relax huh? but we can do this after this video is ending because Instagram only 60 minutes and then they were cut off a few classes before I was a bit overrun they just auto cut off which is pretty embarrassing so I have 28 seconds more I turn back on the comments give me a thumbs up give me a like give me a hug if you like the if you like the class if you are watching or eating or having your dinner you can always catch it again in our Instagram post and I'll see you back again for next week, next Monday, same time, same channel for Yoga Strength. Alright, thank you everyone. Have a good evening. Stay safe. Namaste.